Why can't you just be good but need to be holy too? Good morning everyone. This is our reflection question for today. St. Monica, also known as Monica of Hippo, is St. Augustine of Hippo's mother. She was born in 331 AD and died 387 AD. She was canonized pre-congregation and is recognized as the patroness of wives and abuse victims. Her feast day is August 27th. Though she was a practicing Christian, at a very young age Monica was married to a Roman pagan named Patricius. Her life of prayer and holiness bothered her husband, but it is believed he respected her beliefs and he loved her. Unfortunately, Patricius' mother lived with them and she shared his violent temper. The two presented daily challenges to Monica, but she was patient and prayed they would convert to Christianity. Over the years, Monica gave birth to two sons, Augustine and Navigius, and one daughter named Perpetua. Since Patricius was not a Christian, he refused to allow their children to be baptized. However, Augustine fell ill and Monica pleaded with her husband to allow their son to be baptized. Patricius saw how ill his son was and conceded, but later changed his mind when Augustine became well again. For several years after Augustine's illness, Monica prayed for her husband and mother-in-law. One day, when Augustine was 16 years old, they both finally embraced the Christian faith. One year later, Patricius passed away. At her husband's passing, Monica sent her lazy and wayward son to Carthage for an education. When he returned, she learned he had become a Manichaean, and she turned him away. He also was engaged in a relationship with a woman outside of marriage. The two even had a son whom they had named Audiodatus. Later, she received a vision in which she was advised to reconcile with her son. Her two other children later entered the religious life, and so Monica set off in search of Augustine. She eventually came upon St. Ambrose, who helped her to speak to Augustine. The influence of this holy bishop also had a great influence on Augustine, and helped lead him to Jesus Christ and the Church. Augustine was baptized, along with his son and a friend. Monica passed away after seeing this answer to her prayer, and her body was buried in Ostia. It was moved to Osta, near the tomb of St. Aria of Ostia. Then in 1430, Pope Martin V ordered her relics to be brought to Rome. Numerous miracles were reported to have occurred along the way. Later, Cardinal de Estoteville built a church to honor St. Augustine called the Basilica de Santa Agostino, where her relics can still be found to the left of the high altar. To learn more about St. Monica, visit catholic.org. Today's the memorial of St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine, one of the greatest saints and doctors of the Catholic Church. The Gospel reading today is also about the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. They are waiting for the arrival of the bridegroom. Because his time of coming was uncertain, five of the bridesmaids brought an extra supply of oil to put into their lamps. The other five did not. They all fell asleep waiting until they were awakened by a call that the bridegroom was coming. The foolish ones suddenly realized their oil was not enough and scampered to buy more oil. When they came back, all the people were in the hall for the marriage celebrations and they were refused entry. Today we continue our reflection from yesterday of our need to become prepared for the second coming of Jesus, which is not known, or when we come to meet him face to face in the pearly gates of heaven. To be in a state of sin is, indeed, tragic and has painful consequences. It is not enough to be a good person, for goodness can be subject to the seasons of one's feelings. Just like the five bridesmaids who did not prepare well, we too can ignore the call to sanctification. Many people who are not Christians are good people, make no mistake about it. They are friendly, kind, generous. But when we do good to others without a deep spiritual foundation, we can be doing such either sporadically for ourselves or be purely led by emotion. Our senses become our basis for goodness rather than a loftier goal of imitating Christ. When we are hurt or don't like someone, our goodness is withdrawn and withheld. But let me qualify that God does not discriminate based on religion. Far from it. 
But for us who are in the faith, we need to focus more intensely on our calling of holiness. God says, Be holy, for I am holy, from Leviticus and 1 Peter. A scattered attention to our relationship with God may lead us to the precipice of sin. The absence of a constant, undistracted, unhurried prayer life results in confusion, depression, anxiety, a jumbled set of priorities. Garbled messages over the cell phone may be caused by a weak signal that is intermittent. Our disquiet, our maladies, our spiritual malaise may also be caused by a weak connection to our God. Grace does not flow through from God because of our weak faith and our effort that is sporadic. Today we must make a commitment that we shall have a more focused prayer life, a more ascetic approach to holiness, a more resolute effort to follow God's commandment of love. When striving for holiness becomes a way of life, we can do good and be good even when we don't feel like doing so or being one. Our struggles may continue, our doubts may linger, and our fears may remain, but we notice a change in our outlook. Our emotions become less erratic, our joy grows, our peace emerges, our burdens are lighter to bear, our steely nerves are able to overcome, all because we have allowed God's grace to control us rather than us controlling our vulnerable self that is exposed to an uncontrollable world. Like Saint Monica, let us be persistent in seeking God and striving for holiness, for indeed our world will become a holy ground because we have led others to be holy and good, beginning with ourselves. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to prepare well to meet you someday. Speak to me through my prayer time, and make me resolute to become holy like you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.